Hello, everybody, and excited to have you all present at today's session of Moduli Talks. My name is Sophie Hotekete, and I will be moderating this webinar. We organize the Moduli Talks as a platform where experts in the design industry come together to share knowledge and ideas, and we are confident that the Moduli Talks will inspire you with creativity and innovation. I'm proud to kick off the series of talks focused on the power of artificial intelligence in architecture and design. This three-part webinar series will take you from the fundamentals of AI through its real-world applications and land you into the practical realities of an architect. Today, we have with us Philippe Morel. He's co-founder of EZCT, a Paris-based architecture and design research agency. Philippe will explore the profound implications AI holds for the future of architecture. I invite Philippe Morel to share his insights with you. Uh, great. Uh, thanks a lot, Sophie, for this introduction. Uh, I'm very happy, actually, to be presenting this uh, 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 let's say a couple of ideas about artificial intelligence in, in architecture. As you will see, uh, we will address quite a lot of uh, questions. And I, I will be fast on some of them. Don't worry, uh, you will have time to investigate this further. Um, I assume also that uh, you might have access to this uh, presentation later or to a Q&A session. So we will go through five different, uh, let's say, questions rather than topics. What is AI and how powerful it is? The roots of machine intelligence in architecture. Uh, a couple of remarks on construction, on cities, buildings, and uses. Uh, also a couple of remarks on immediate applications of AI. And uh, finally, the, the conclusion. So uh, what is AI? How, how powerful is it? Uh, if you look at on uh, Wikipedia, you will see that artificial has uh, many different definitions. Uh, the main one is that it's a, the intelligence of machines um, or software as opposed to the intelligence of human beings or animals. But in fact, if you look at, uh, uh, I mean, the history of AI, you see that uh, Marvin Minsky gave its own definition. Um, uh, Lag and Utter also gave definitions. Uh, the pioneer, John McCarthy, who, by the way, created the term artificial intelligence, also gave its own definition. And finally, Shank uh, also uh, gave uh, a definition, which, uh, by the way, I very much uh, like, saying that intelligence means getting better over time. So as you can see, there is an issue of learning. Uh, also, the issue of, of, of machine intelligence, so uh, artificial intelligence, is, it's something which is uh, uh, non-natural, meaning non-human, uh, but it's also something which is deeply uh, rooted in the concept of learning. Uh, today, uh, I mean, yeah, AI uh, as, uh, is defined by many different paradigms, but today deep learning is the most important one. It's used, uh, uh, it's based on neural networks. It corresponds to what we call connectionist AI, which is uh, defined in, mostly in opposition to symbolic AI, which is uh, what we call the good old fashioned artificial intelligence. Um, by the way, the connectionist AI uh, is also defined uh, as a kind of, 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 of analogy of what happens uh, in the brain, uh, because the neurons in the brain are supposed to be connected. I mean, they are not supposed to be connected, they are connected. So uh, the connectionist AI model is very much based on this natural paradigm. Uh, all that started in 1943 with Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts. Uh, McCulloch was a psychologist, and Walter Pitts was a kind of almost self-taught mathematician, but uh, a, 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 an absolute mathematical genius. Uh, and they came up with this uh, idea of a logical calculus of the immanent uh, uh, in nervous, of the ideas, sorry, immanent in nervous activity. 
So this was a kind of kickstart for what we uh, know today as connectionist AI. So we see here an image of McCulloch and Pitts, and we see here a very uh, basically uh, a kind of uh, rough uh, illustration of what uh, AI is on a mathematical level. So basically, it's just a function. Um, I mean, AI can be seen is based on on on, one, on the concept of a neuron. Um, at least when we speak uh, again about connectionist artificial intelligence. So it, it, it's based on the concept of an artificial neuron, uh, which uh, in fact can be seen as a function, but the world of AI, so uh, a, a world, for example, a deep learning model can also be seen as a kind of, of very big uh, mathematical function. So I'm not going into the detail here, but just keep in mind that uh, at the very beginning of AI, the perceptron model that we see here at the top, um, it was very promising, but uh, very soon uh, we started to understand that uh, it was not enough to deal with uh, all the different mathematical uh, functions and problems that we want to solve. But then, thanks to uh, models with multiple layers, uh, the, the, those layers, we call them hidden layers um, in, the, in the neural networks. With multiple layers, we can uh, deal with any kind of mathematical functions and any kind of problem. So basically, artificial intelligence um, is something which, uh, uh, which in fact is... Uh, um, yeah, it, we, we can say that, that neural networks uh, as the capabilities of standard Turing machines. They can uh, solve any computable problem, and this is probably what makes uh, neural networks nowadays so amazingly uh, important and efficient. Uh, so we, we, we have all seen these kind of basic images, so I will go very fast on that. Uh, identifying objects, creating people that do not exist. Uh, we, we, we also know about the, uh, the debates on artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, I mean, it started with Alan Turing in 1950, and, and recently, for example, uh, a philosopher like Nick Bostrom addressed the issue of superintelligence. Uh, what does it mean to have uh, that much computational power at end? Uh, are we going to want this concept of superintelligence, which will, uh, let's say, uh, um, go much further than the addition of all uh, human intelligence uh, available today? Um, what I enjoy uh, on a more philosophical level when we speak about that uh, is that, I mean, probably some people are afraid of artificial intelligence and superintelligence. Some other, like Richard Amin, who, is, uh, uh, who was a, a, a computer scientist, uh, said that we should not be surprised and, and also we should, we should not be aware that some sort of uh, non-human intelligence will, uh, will outperform uh, us. Uh, if we look at dogs, they are much better as uh, uh, um, I, I mean, as uh, uh, smelling things uh, than us, and nobody is afraid or nobody is surprised by this. So we should accept uh, artificial intelligence uh, a, a bit like uh, the way we accept dogs and, and dogs helps us, for example, uh, in catastrophes, etc., uh, to find uh, 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 people. Uh, and artificial intelligence is, is something which sh should be seen in the very same way. Uh, according to a pioneer, uh, Geoffrey Hinton, uh, was a, a, a proponent of uh, what we call backpropagation, even if it did not invent uh, backpropagation per se. Uh, but according to Geoffrey Hinton, deep learning is going to be able to do everything. Uh, it's it's uh, probably true. Um, on a mathematical level, it's capable of doing everything. Um, so this is why we should uh, consider this uh, extremely seriously. So artificial intelligence uh, allows uh, new ways of dealing with uh, the concept of invention. In, in fact, it uh, helps us reinventing the way we invent, at least according to MIT and Hypermedia.
PFC as well. Uh, and according to me, it uh, it uh, it opens a completely new um, uh, era in the history of humankind. Um, the last 500 years were defined by what we call rationalism. I mean, it, it was really the golden age of Western rationalism. Rationalism is based on human knowledge. Uh, it seems to me that we are now uh, leaving this era and entering a new era that I call computationalism. I did not invent the term computationalism, which comes from uh, 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 cognitive uh, science. But uh, I, I, I give it a kind of new meaning. Uh, I make it more general uh, because I believe that uh, it's replacing rationalism at the very moment. Uh, why? Because everything is computational. I mean, if we want to do economics, uh, science, chemistry, biology, architecture, uh, uh, whatever we can think about, uh, everything is now, uh, has now become computational. So this is what defines computationalism according to me. So in the domain of architecture, not so long ago, we were still dealing with these kind of things, you know, before the uh, invention of CAD uh, software. And after the invention of CAD software, we were dealing with this, like, like many different icons, uh, many different mathematical functions that are embedded uh, 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 in these uh, systems. and. and uh, by, by, by the way, it's a bit of a black box. Most people don't really understand what they are doing, uh, mathematically speaking, but they just click on icons and, and basically it works. Uh, it gives uh, what they were looking for. So it's a bit like that with artificial intelligence, as uh, we will see later. Uh, in 2003, an exhibition, uh, uh, a kind of now uh, <laughs> almost like a, a, a classical and very famous uh, uh, exhibition at Saint Pompidou was called Archit Architecture uh, Non Standard, Non Standard Architecture. Uh, and that exhibition was dedicated to the first uh, digital revolution, let's say, in architecture. But obviously, now with artificial intelligence, we are entering a second or maybe a third digital revolution uh, in architecture. I tried to deal with this myself in 2000 seven in an exhibition I did in Marseille, uh, in south of France, uh, and the title was Architecture Beyond Forms, the Computational Term. And as you will see, I very much believe that uh, the whole issue is not the issue of form, it's, it's of what kind of intelligence we are dealing with today when we speak uh, uh, about architecture, architectural intelligence, and obviously uh, artificial intelligence in the discipline of architecture. So I kept investigating this through a series of, of, of lectures, uh, 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 symposiums that I uh, organized uh, as, a, as an academic uh, in, in, in various uh, uh, university environments, including in Paris, but uh, uh, also uh, in, in, in London. Recently, uh, I had the, uh, the opportunity to to uh, uh, put this uh, issue uh, uh, a bit more again, uh, thanks to this new exhibition at Saint Pompidou uh, in 2020, which was uh, dedicated to a simulated intelligence. Uh, the title was Neurons, uh, Les Intelligences Simulées, which means Neurons Simulated Intelligence. Uh, it, uh, so this uh, exhibition uh, was about uh, uh, the impact of, of, of robotics, but uh, the impact of all the different uh, brain models um, in the evolution of technolo technology, including robotics and obviously computers as well. In architecture, I'm sure many of you have heard about the uh, world uh, parametric design or parametric uh, architecture. In fact, uh, this world parametric design uh, was invented quite a long time ago in 1960 by an Italian architect uh, whose name was uh, Luigi Moretti. Uh, and he organized this exhibition uh, at the uh, Milano uh, Triennale uh, in 1960 called Architectura Parametrica uh, e di Ricerca Matematica e Operativa uh, nel Urbanistica. So basically, this exhibition was uh, dedicated to the use of mathematical models. In, uh, in the discipline of architecture and urban design. 
uh, it was not artificial intelligence. Uh, it was dealing with uh, more classical mathematics, like like uh, really analytic definitions of forms and and and, and mathematical uh, problems. Uh, more or less. Uh, I mean, 10 years later, not exactly at the same time, but 10 years later, um, uh, one very influential book was published by Nicolas Necroponte at uh, MIT uh, in 1970, um, uh, whose name was The Architecture Machine. And we could say that it really launched, uh, uh, let's say, at a global scale, uh, the issue of, of machine intelligence in the discipline of, of architecture. Uh, at the same time, uh, or, or slightly uh, uh, later, uh, uh, computer edit uh, design software like AutoCAD and many other software started to appear. Um, AutoCAD at the very beginning of the 80s, uh, but AutoCAD is not the first. I mean, uh, it's, it's simply the most influential at that time and the most well known. Um, but basically, uh, at, the, at the same time, uh, many books were published about the, uh, uh, the revolution that was uh, brought by, by CAD software. Uh, it's not uh, AI yet, uh, but those books are extremely interesting because, at, at, in fact, they, are way, they were extremely uh, 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 open, open-minded. Uh, they were dealing with many different uh, questions in the issue of, of design. Uh, and uh, if uh, you can get back to this, you will you will see that it's quite uh, amazing to um, to let's say to get a glimpse at this uh, uh, archaeology of the uh, digital architecture. Uh, an important concept that was created in the 70s was the one of uh, uh, shape grammars. Um, it corresponds more or less to uh, what we call symbolic AI, symbolic artificial intelligence. Um, obviously, today uh, we see that it was not that uh, efficient, but it still uh, it was very innovative. It had a, a, a worldwide uh, influence in all universities all over the world, uh, and these shape grammars were invented invented by George uh, Steiny at the beginning of the seventies. But uh, the most influential book uh, uh, is is dated from uh, nineteen. 78. Uh, a more recent book and uh, work by John Fraser in London uh, is called An Evolutionary Architecture. I'm sure also you have uh, heard about uh, uh, evolutionary computation or genetic algorithms uh, or uh, genetic architecture or uh, uh, evolutionary architecture, etc. etc. Uh, we could we could say that it's already a form of uh, artificial intelligence. I mean, basically, it is artificial intelligence, just it's not based on the use of neural networks. Uh, and, and as I said, uh, most of what we are uh, 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 dealing with today comes from, from neural networks. Uh, but artificial intelligence is a big category with many different kinds of machine intelligence and evolutionary uh, computation, genetic algorithms, etc., on points of uh, this uh, big uh, name, uh, artificial intelligence. So in 2004, uh, my office uh, started to use uh, this kind of uh, uh, intelligence for the design of, of chairs. It was a proof of concept. Uh, the, the idea, in, in fact, it was about trying to uh, deal with this uh, iconic object for architects. We all know that chairs are important. Uh, the famous architect Miss Van der Rohe once said, uh, it's more difficult to design a chair than a skyscraper. Uh, I don't know if it's true, but uh, in any case, uh, we, we, we wanted to, uh, to, to deal with this issue. And uh, we uh, uh, designed this. So let me uh, run this small uh, video. Uh, and you will see we started with a very rough de definition of what should be a chair. Uh, a kind of minimal definition of what a chair sh should be. Uh, and then we let the computer compute different uh, outputs. Uh, uh, I mean, some of these outputs are optimal, some of them are not really good, uh, but we could say that ultimately 
Um, we cannot have a proof that there is one better output, but we can have we can have a kind of proof that there are many uh, uh, quasi-optimal or sub-optimal uh, outputs. So uh, then we applied, uh, as you will see, the same concept uh, to the design of a small pavilion for uh, an art collector in Paris. It was part of the Zero C Pavilion competition in 2007. And here, basically, you see the computer, which is computing uh, the best uh, allocation of, of, of natural lights uh, in, in different kinds of, uh, of volumes. Uh, in, in a sense, this is already artificial intelligence. Uh, but again, uh, I really insist on that. It's, it's, it's a very, very different kind of artificial intelligence compared to uh, what we are doing uh, uh, today or what we are dealing with uh, at, the, at the very moment. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, I mean, just an image of the different chairs. Uh, then we also experimented with, with structures, with more abstract and, and concept, uh, approaches of, of structures. So basically, uh, what are the challenges? Uh, in architecture, one challenge uh, is obviously the uh, construction. Uh, uh, can we make uh, lighter construction, more and more efficient? Uh, can we deal with innovative ways of using concrete, for example? Uh, this uh, is also something we investigated uh, as uh, in, uh, in our office, uh, Easy City, in, in Paris. So in 2012, uh, we invented a new way of dealing with uh, fiber reinforced, uh, um, uh, uh, extremely uh, uh, ultra high performance concrete. So we 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 casted the first uh, three dimensional uh, UHPC structures uh, structure thanks to uh, the 3D printing of of sand molds. So here in black you see the sand molds, uh, and in gray you see the, the the fiber reinforced concrete. Uh, then we extended this uh, concept to the design of different uh, objects, architecture objects, for example, these stairs. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we, we, I mean, the project didn't go through, but uh, still we have all, all the studies. And also uh, we investigated the application of this for, for uh, ambitious structures. Uh, which is uh, something we finally did in, in, in 2014 and 2015 using uh, clay 3D printing in a, in, in a novel way uh, because the clay can be recycled infinitely here because it was not cooked. Um, so we can just recycle uh, it uh, as much as, uh, as we want. And as you can see, uh, we, we created this uh, 3D printed uh, uh, I mean, this, this casted uh, piece of uh, structural uh, concrete, which, uh, uh, which has been casted in a 3D printed uh, clay mold. Uh, this, as you will see, will open the way towards a new company, which uh, uh, will, uh, was to become uh, Xtreme, which is a company I, I created uh, and launched in, in, at the very end of uh, 2015. So uh, we were speaking about artificial intelligence uh, being able to do everything, according to Geoffrey Hinton. We could also all, also say that 3D printing has a potential to do everything, which uh, is uh, perfectly true, by the way. Uh, and obviously, we will. Uh, one of the challenge is uh, the kind of of convergence between uh, AI and, and 3D printing. Uh, here I just show you some, some past work uh, very quickly uh, made of uh, 3D printing. Uh, but uh, uh, again, I'm showing this uh, also to, to give you an idea of, of, of what's my background, what I did, but also to, to let that according to me, these are the two most radical technological invention in the past uh, 50 years in the domain of architecture. Uh, artificial intelligence and 3D printing. And I very much believe that the convergence of these techniques is going to change architecture uh, in, a, in a very dramatic uh, way. So when we deal with a, a big scale, uh, uh, obviously here, uh, those buildings are not 3D printed, they are, they are more 
classical warehouse, uh, steel frame buildings. Uh, but uh, here, uh, getting back to the issue of artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence is present absolutely every, everywhere here. Uh, it makes logistics possible. Uh, it makes uh, the, the, let's say, uh, I wouldn't say it makes home office or home, uh, or, or home work uh, home working possible because uh, it's not just based on AI, but uh, obviously it will uh, it will have also big impact on what we are doing at home. Uh, uh, so this is why I, I'm mentioning this. So basically, uh, uh, AI has to deal with the issue of data. Uh, we cannot train the neural networks model without a, a very massive amount of, of data. Uh, but, I mean, the more we use data, the more data we produce, we are producing as well. Uh, so we, we are in this kind of endless loop uh, of a data deluge, uh, as, it's, uh, as it is called, uh, which also transforms the buildings, which transforms the factories, but also the factories transforms uh, the, the, transform the uh, issue of, of data and the accumulation of data. So artificial intelligence can be seen as a tool for architects, but it should also be considered on a more uh, massive and global scale. Otherwise, uh, we will just like over-focus on a very tiny domain of application and we will miss the big picture. And I mean, usually when we, when we miss the big pictures, uh, we don't really go uh, far, far away. Uh, so, uh, artificial intelligence has been uh, connected with the internet. Uh, we could say also that without the internet, we don't have massive data. Without the massive data, there's no way we can train big models. So, all this ecosystem is very important to be uh, understood. In the future, uh, we can uh, see, for example, that there's going to be a massive amount of data generated by autonomous cars. Uh, how are we going to deal with this data? Yeah, basically, thanks to artificial intelligence. So, as you as you know, uh, artificial intelligence, or let's say, as you can see, uh, as uh, 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 pervaded, uh, I mean, every single domain in uh, uh, in, in human production. Uh, and, and human activity uh, on social networks, but uh, let's say everywhere. So getting back to a, a more uh, great application of artificial intelligence, uh, if you brought uh, through internet, you will see uh, hundreds, thousands, or maybe already tens of thousands of, of uh, architectural projects that are that uh, have been created thanks to artificial intelligence. Here, I just show you uh, some of them by, by very uh, original, smart, and, and, and fresh designers. For, uh, for example, here it's a project uh, made uh, with Midjourney, which is an artificial intelligence uh, tool. It's, uh, it's part of what we call a generative AI. Uh, it generates images. Uh, in 2D for the moment, but uh, it's it's clear that all of that will go 3D. Uh, it's already going 3D uh, at some point. Uh, so this project, can you imagine uh, the amount of time that was necessary before to do this? Uh, we needed to do 3D modeling, then to deal with the texture, with the mapping, with the lights, etc., etc. Uh, now we can do this all in one. Uh, in one go. So these projects uh, are all generated with artificial intelligence. Uh, so the quality, the professional quality of the, of the tools that are uh, already available is absolutely amazing. Uh, I, I kept saying to my students, but uh, also to <laughs> other, other peoples, uh, Probably 2022 was the most important uh, year in architecture uh, after the, uh, let's say, the launch of, uh, of, of AutoCAD, or maybe it's even more important than that. I, I really believe that um, it's the most important year uh, after maybe the invention of the computer, uh, I mean, for the discipline of architecture, or maybe some very big invention like uh, invention of, of, of reinforced concrete 
on steel structure, etc., etc. Et uh, there will be an era before 2022 in architecture and after 2022. It's it's it, it's really a turning point. So uh, you see this image here. It's also generated with artificial intelligence. Same here, etc., etc. So think of what we had at the very beginning of the of the eighties. It was so basic. It it was just like I mean, very basic software, very dumb. And look at what we can get today. Uh, some people use artificial intelligence to generate like crazy uh, projects uh, like this. Uh, this approach is also very much based on uh, this concept of deep dreaming uh, that was launched by uh, Google. Uh, uh, we can we, we can see a kind of artistic genealogy in this. It's based on, on new. Uh, uh, investigation of, of, of on perceptions, but also new investigations on the, on the power of, uh, of the dreams, on the progress of, of vision, uh, disturbed vision, distorted vision, etc., etc. I'm not going to uh, give, a, 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 let's say, a, an, an art history class here, uh, but obviously, obviously, uh, when we deal with artificial intelligence in architecture, uh, we need to keep uh, in the back of our head uh, the history of art and the history of, uh, of, of visual, uh, uh, visual arts in general. Uh, this is AI. Uh, this is AI as well. Uh, this is quite puzzling uh, because, uh, again, like just a few years ago, it was absolutely impossible to think of such high quality uh, image uh, generation. It's changing the fashion industry. It's changing the architecture industry. Uh, but uh, and it's going fast. I think probably what is the most uh, uh, amazing and impressive is how fast all this is going. Uh, we can we can generate this kind of, of landscape, and, and I very much uh, like this uh, uh, work by Olivier Campagne. Uh, because he speaks about imagin imaginary landscape, and I think he's right. Uh, we are not generating new architectural projects, we are generating new landscapes at the global scale, and this is why uh, AI is such a big, big revolution. So basically, uh, this project was not based uh, on the use of artificial intelligence, it's a project by Zahadit, but as you can see, it has a, a puzzling complexity. And one of the challenges of artificial intelligence, let's say beyond the issue of, of images, beyond like crazy architectural project, uh, it's, uh, it's about uh, how we deal with complexity, how we deal with uh, uh, the construction complexity, how we deal with, uh, uh, with, with the price, uh, with uh, uh, extremely big, uh, uh, um, let's say economic uh, challenges that are associated with this project. I think here uh, we are following uh, what has been done uh, in the in the in the boat in the ship uh, construction industry. By the way, we have to keep in mind that that softwares like No Rhinoceros, for example, they are coming from the shipbuilding industry. Uh, why? Because uh, a ship is uh, is a very very complex object it is a very tricky question in the ship uh, 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 industry and this is why in fact they invested much more in the use of uh, advanced CAD uh, softwares and, and solution so one of the challenge today is uh, how the construction industry is using big data uh, how the construction industry uh, deal, deals with uh, big data and, and therefore also deals with artificial intelligence. Uh, so it's not just a matter of, uh, of producing, uh, let's say, uh, fancy images. It's, it's we are here speaking about big money. And I believe that these are the real challenges nowadays. So uh, with my student in London, uh, we are trying to address this. Uh, we are trying to use artificial intelligence, not just to generate uh, images, uh, our original project, but to create new kinds of of of, of, uh, of project, 
new uh, ways of dealing with uh, uh, the issue of uh, housing at a global scale uh, what kind of new global what kind of new models we can we can generate so we used uh, la defense as a case study uh, in the past uh, two years uh, to uh, use i mean to 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 explore the application of artificial intelligence in in the generation of of innovative uh, buildings and uh, 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 and housing scenario. So all of those projects are based on the use of uh, artificial intelligence. I I go very quickly because uh, all of this is available online. Uh, I will indicate the, the sources. But as you can see here, uh, I mean, <laughs> you have to trust me. Uh, but. Uh, uh, this is making use of different forms of what we call artificial intelligence. Sometimes it's classical algorithms like genetic algorithms. Sometimes uh, it's machine learning based on the use of connectionist uh, approaches. Uh, but in any case, uh, we can consider that all of these projects, so uh, I believe we, 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 we make very deep investigation uh, on the evolution of la defense, uh, probably the deepest investigation that has been made, made on a purely architectural level, uh, because we work for two consecutive years on la defense uh, with uh, 30 students. So we came up with very interesting things. And as you can see here, uh, we, uh, we applied artificial intelligence for this uh, project, uh, for this scenario. Uh, if you look at the title of some more recent work, uh, especially the built environment dissertations from a, a UCL student, uh, you see uh, it's uh, uh, AI has spread it uh, at, the, at, at the speed of light. Uh, there is almost no project which is not making use of artificial intelligence right now. Uh, you see this in the title of this thesis by students. Uh, and I encourage you to visit online uh, this publication uh, from the uh, Bartlett uh, School of Architecture uh, students. Um, either the standard cur curriculum or the BPRO uh, program. Uh, all of this is online. So what's the uh, conclusion of uh, all of First, uh, if I make a kind of provocative statement, uh, uh, based on this uh, already provocative statement by, by surrealist artists. They said that surrealism was a co communism of genius. Uh, right, uh, it was a communism of genius because anybody could be an artist. Uh, I mean, dreaming was enough. Uh, it sufficed to dream and to, uh, <laughs> to wake up at the right moment and then you just had to translate your, to, 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 to put your dream on, on, on papers, let's say, to create this kind of crazy surrealist uh, pieces of, of art. So thanks to Midjourney and uh, all of this uh, available software, Midjourney, DALI, uh, uh, and, and many others, uh, uh, one, uh, once by the way, there's, there's a whole collection of these uh, platforms uh, already. We could say that artificial artificial intelligence is a communism of genius. Uh, it brings unparalleled skills to everyone. Uh, I wrote on this issue uh, uh, on different supports. Uh, so uh, if you have time, you can easily go online and, and, and find uh, some of my uh, uh, writings uh, on this. Uh, I, I, I said, and I keep thinking that the computer is a new uh, petroleum. It's a source of energy and raw power, a resource of chemical engineering and a complex raw material with strong constructive potential. Like petroleum, the computer also produces its own geopolitics. I have to say that today we could say that it's not just a computer, but it's AI. Uh, uh, more precisely, uh, which creates its own geopolitics and its, its own new uh, world. Uh, in 2012,
12, uh, I was interviewed and I said that 20 years ago, a Corbusier house uh, uh, smartphone application, for example, wouldn't have designed a building as well as a pupil of Le Corbusier. Today, such an application would probably provide a better architectural solution. Uh, I think this happens. Uh, this is happening today thanks to artificial intelligence platforms, thanks to generative architectural intelligence, we could say that software finally allows more or less anyone to create extremely good architectural solutions. So it redefines uh, the role of uh, the architect, it redefines the economy of architecture, it redefines also uh, what we, uh, uh, what, what, let's say, what we can say about the role of disruptive technologies in architecture. Uh, recently, I curated a book uh, on that published at Springer. Uh, it creates a kind of computational politics uh, as well. So uh, I uh, indicate this as a uh, as a reference. Uh, why? Because I want to conclude uh, uh, on that. Uh, I wrote uh, an essay which is called Why Disruptive Business Models Are Inseparable from Disruptive Technologies. It's in that book. Uh, why I do insist so much on this? For two reasons. Uh, first, uh, because in 2030, we could say that more than 90% of all content on internet will be generated by AI. Uh, what does it mean? It means that if you don't have the clean data, it's going to be very difficult to train uh, efficient uh, um, neural networks model uh, in, a re in a reliable manner because there's a new concept which is uh, uh, which is appearing it's called data poisoning and data poisoning is going to become a question even before most architects uh, understood uh, <laughs> the importance of data so uh, they are already let's say late because they don't understand what to use with their data but even before they understand, it's going to be too late because the concept of data poisoning is going to change all of that. The second uh, thing is that uh, I believe that in architecture, uh, in creative jobs, uh, creative uh, disciplines and, and, and work, etc., what is the most important is not just the issue of artificial intelligence, even if we speak about that, it's key, obviously, but I still believe that the most important is the issue of business models. But maybe we can use artificial intelligence to create new business models, by the way, to give us new ideas of business uh, models. Why? Uh, because AI is no advantage when everyone uses uh, it. And it's exactly what, what happens at the moment. We are all using AI, then we are all uh, uh, on, the same, on the same line. Let's say. So still, a uh, business model is uh, is uh, is a very important issue, and it's I think uh, going to become even more important, or let's say ever more important. Basically, it is how do we monetize the use or the production of artificial intelligence? For me, it's the most single important question today in business. Some will ask, uh, what about ethics? Uh, I cannot go into this in detail, obviously, it would be far too long. Uh, but I would answer uh, with uh, Stuart Russell, uh, with an expert, a uh, very widely known expert in AI, because uh, he, he co wrote um, with Peter Norvig the most important or let's say, the most well known books on artificial intelligence, which uh, is called Artificial Intelligence A Modern Approach. Uh, Stuart Russell rightly says, according to me, ethics of AI is simply AI. So uh, basically, I want to end up with this uh, with these quotes to uh, open the, uh, I mean, the discussion, uh, and also because uh, I mean, speaking of ethics of artificial intelligence is uh, uh, is a far too complex matter that cannot be discussed. Uh, today, obviously. So uh, I thank you a lot for listening, uh, and I hope uh, you enjoyed this. Uh,
presentation and that you will have a few questions. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Philippe, for this very interesting uh, session on the uh, on uh, artificial intelligence. Um, we do have received some questions in the chat. Um, we're actually running out of time, so we're going to pick out uh, some of the uh, final questions. Maybe a more practical one is, what is the name of the AI software of the projects that you have presented um, during um, the session? It was of the architectural projects. Uh, so many projects, uh, many uh, of the images uh, that I presented by, by some of my colleagues are uh, based on the use of mid-journey. Mid-journey, mid uh, it's, it's one uh, uh, software. Uh, you can also use uh, Stable Diffusion or DALI. So uh, I would say at the very moment there are the three uh, most well-known softwares. So mid journey, stable diffusion, and DALI. Okay, thanks. Um, another question that came in: How is three D printing related to artificial intelligence? Uh, I would say that, uh, let's say, three D printing at the very moment it's mostly uh, related to the issues of materials. Uh, uh, so uh, we sometimes we need like material scientists. Uh, I mean, it really depends on, on at which level you do 3D printing. But uh, one of the important issues is the issue of material, and the second important issue is the one of robotics. Uh, in fact, both robotics and material sciences are now being redefined by the use of artificial intelligence. So as a very logical consequence, uh, 3D printing is going to be more and more uh, dependent on artificial intelligence in the future. Okay, um, maybe we go uh, for one final question. Uh, it's a question that came uh, through uh, several times. Um, how do you see the role of an architect in the future, taking into account how strong is AI getting in architecture? Uh, I mean, I, I, or, let's say, I always believe that uh, the ultimate uh, phase of, uh, of wrong uh, is uh, conceptual creation. Uh, for me, in the past, an architect uh, was somebody who uh, had a certain knowledge of construction. Uh, according to Alberti, an architect should be knowledgeable in everything. <laughs> uh, but uh, in, in fact, not only knowledgeable in everything, but also better in, in most of the different domains than the people who work on the construction site, for example, the stone mason. Uh, it's not possible anymore. Obviously, an architect nowadays is not uh, more knowledgeable in mechanical engineering than the engineer himself. But let's say uh, this was the classical definition of, of architecture. I would say today that the, the role of the architects is to come up with new concepts of architecture. Uh, because, uh, because the computer will transform this concept of architecture into something that can be built, into something that can be, uh, that can be sold, into something that will be uh, economically uh, feasible and, and, and uh, 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 viable. So, Basically, because we have this crazy automation at end, which uh, uh, which is based on computer automation, which it itself is based on the use of artificial intelligence software, uh, I would say that the, the true role of the architect will be to come up with new concepts uh, and not necessarily with uh, the design or I mean, no, not the design, it's not the right word, because in English it's, it's something else, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, the architect, for example, is not, he won't, won't have to be, uh, to, to spend too much time on construction, because my feeling is that uh, software will be so good that they will propose construction solutions that will be, in most cases, much more advanced 
some any architect would dream of, you know. So, uh, but the software so far it has no capabilities for conceptual creation. So maybe if architect will uh, will deal with this, it's uh, maybe because that's all they can do. You know, because that's the only thing that a machine is not doing at the moment, inventing concepts. Okay. But also, I believe that ultimately that's what architecture is about. Yep, great, uh, great views. Thank you so much. Um, this webinar session has come to an end. Uh, thank you again, Philippe, uh, for this very interesting overview. Um, and I hope to see you all for the upcoming talks of the Artificial Intelligence series with Tim Fu and lastly with Leo Stuckart. All details on these uh, talks will be sent to you via email together with the recording of this modulus talks and also uh, the answers to all the questions that came in through the chat. So thank you again and have a great day. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thanks.